Hello, and you are back in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. This is our fifth episode, and we'll be discussing how, no matter what happens, politicians won't save you. And really, the impetus for this discussion topic is Trump's arrest. Well, not arrest. I mean, the mugshot and how so many people want him to be um, basically under the prison in that orange jumpsuit, um, this vindictive need to just... Um, hate Trump as much as possible and have his life be as destroyed as possible. Um, you know, end it essentially. You know, being in prison, being in that orange jumpsuit, there are people who viscerally want that, who think that if that were to happen, that somehow improves your life. And if you are one of those people, I genuinely want you to sit and think about if, you know, Trump were to be arrested, he was in that orange jumpsuit, you got to see him be under the prison. How does that improve your life? How does that make anything that's going on in your life better, more satisfying, more fulfilling? Now, of course, you could be like, well, you know, my personal life is, you know, perfect in every way, and I just hate Trump, you know, all day, every day, or I just need him to be in prison um, because reasons, well, whatever. But if you are like, you know, any other person on this planet and you've got issues or problems you're working through, uh, then Trump being arrested or Trump being the next uh, president and building a, a Trump empire that'll last for the next thousand years isn't going to help you either. So no matter what happens, no matter how you feel about Trump or any other politician, it's meaningless at the end of the day because your life will only get better if you make it better and you have to be the one who's in uh, control, in the driver's seat. You have to have that mindset, not, oh, um, the economy's bad, we need Trump back. Or, oh, Trump, you know, was so bad, we need to, to heal from that. Or we need to have him in prison to uh, make things better because that's going to make things better somehow. You have to have the mindset that your life can get better uh, and you are the one who has to do it. And no one's going to stop you. There are going to be obstacles and things in the way that will prevent you from doing that. But... Uh, you can overcome them, and that's the mindset that you have to be in, and that's the mindset that politicians don't want you to be in, because politics is about producing the most um, inflammatory uh, statements possible to get as many people um, on your side as possible, and it's always presenting um, themselves as if um, they're going to fix everything and they're going to solve all your problems when they just want to create more problems. They want to steal from you. They want to destroy your communities. They want to take more for themselves and leave less for everybody else. That is how the government operates. It is a institution that has to have complete in utter control of everything in order to survive. And it does so involuntarily. That, that is how the government is always going to operate. That's how any state operates. And especially when you challenge the authority of the state, they come after you hard. You can ask the Proud Boys about that, the January 6th protesters, anyone who goes against uh, the state and challenges their authority in any sort of way that's perceived to be meaningful by the state, uh, they throw the book at them. And that's not necessarily to say that what uh, these people you know, would do uh, aren't acts of aggression or aren't things that aren't necessarily justified. It gets into a bit of um, a gray area for me with uh, acts of aggression against the state because the state is built on a theft and aggression. So to um, aggress in response to that isn't the least justified thing. It just isn't productive at all and it doesn't really solve anything. So I'm a very much a, a nonviolent um, advocate of dismantling the state. It, it should be done peacefully, and that, that's really the way we have to uh, go about doing it with decentralization, especially in this country, is to go about it through a more peaceful, logical, rational, and compassionate way, because the government is not compassionate at all. You have to uh, remember that. So it's all a system that's meant to enrich the uh, politicians and the ruling class, the, uh, the corporate elite um, they work in tandem in this corporate system that we have, and it's not that much different in um, other parts of the world, from my view, considering you have the UN and these G6 and G8 conferences. It's just uh, different skins on the same, um, I guess, person, if you want to use that analogy. Uh, it's not that much um, different when you look at things, you know, some states uh, operate better than others. They have more stringent laws on stuff like the food supply, and that does make 
um you know some people healthier or that has made the general population healthier but if you're like well you know europe has you know better laws with you know food um you know regulations in, you know, in the food supply and that makes things uh better if you look at you know like the uk and you see how many children are getting their teeth um removed from cavities because they're eating too much sugar and that rots their teeth it's still a problem they they want you fat sick and lazy it's just how fat sick and lazy they they want you to be in my mind uh, but uh, of course you can always as an individual um, realize how broken the food supply is how um, malnourished the government wants you to be and operate in spite of that you don't have to follow the food pyramid just because they want you to and this this is where i'm bringing it back to you can't rely on the fda to reliably uh, make sure that drugs are safe or that food is actually going to be good for you. You have to put that work in yourself and make these individual choices to one where if you can be in good health, you can be in good health where you don't need to rely on the medical system. You don't need to rely on um, drugs that the FDA might not do a good job in making sure are safe for you to consume because you don't need them. And uh, you have the knowledge and the wherewithal to know if you um, food's going to degrade your health or not if you put that work in, into sourcing your food um, somewhat reliably. Even if you're just making better choices at the grocery store, that's a huge step up from where they want you to be in terms of um, control. And I, I talk about food a lot because you uh, it's important. One, I've talked a lot about nutrition, but two, it, it stems from everything else in terms of just regulation. You think about the media, you think about the um transportation system it, um the state has a hand in almost uh ba basically every aspect of um, every business because every business has to answer the state in some way you know licensing taxation um labor laws all these sorts of things that the state will impose onto basically any business so the government is uh, got his greedy little hands and uh, everything and you've got to be aware that there is an agenda and you have to operate in spite of it because it's against you as an individual in terms of making you as independent and um, able to thrive on your own as possible because that is not how the state wants you to be operating they want you dependent on them one way or another i want you to perceive yourself as being dependent on them and even if it's not a financial thing even if it's not a um you know, you know in terms of being on their social safety net it's thinking that the state needs to exist um to regulate to uh enforce laws to do these uh things that the government is just seen as having to do um, or, or like like the solution being that if you know everyone pays their fair share of taxes society gets better right that's uh it's fundamentally ridiculous that people are in that mindset but it's done by the state and the state has a lot of cultural influence we talk you know doc and i on hump day potpourri about the culture and how it's important um to um influence the culture if you want to get um your message to be accepted by by the people and the government is a big uh, cultural actor you you look at uh, the biden administration bringing uh, tiktokers to talk about the gas prices because they know a lot of young people are on tiktok so if they get the most influential tiktokers um to push a certain message that will have effect yeah. an effect in the culture and you've got stuff like the ad council and, and the fcc regulating how um the media uh can distribute their messages and certain messages you know get distributed by the ad council uh you realize that the government is a cultural player uh it's just just the way that the, the state functions um because they're so uh prevalent in the lives of uh, people because um, you know everyone has to pay taxes everyone who owns a business has to um operate with some sort of license or or one way or another so the state is relevant to the culture because it's relevant to um, people's individual lives unfortunately because like i said the government has its greedy little hands in everything and that's why you have to be aware of it and you have to do everything you can to make the government and politics relevant in your life which is why you should say disengage from the voting system unless you're voting in local pol politics where you have more control and influence on what goes on in your local community because that's that's the important thing you want to decentralize as much as possible that starts at the individual level and it goes up so from your from you as an individual to your local community to 
the town you live in is going to be far more relevant in your life than what's going on in Washington, D.C., or even your state capital, uh, I would say. So if, um, you know, your your town's a mess and there's litter every, everywhere, if you can get you and a couple of your friends to pick up the litter and throw it out into, um, you know, the local dump, then you're going to improve uh, your community. And that's going to make things better and that's going to make uh, life better. Of course, that's a little bit of... Uh, you know, one, just one thing, but it's, uh, when you're in that mindset, you can, um, make things better and you don't need the state to do that or even be in that mindset. Whereas if you're dependent on thinking, well, you know, if I don't get disability or if I don't get social security payments or, or X, Y, and Z, uh, from the state, and you're just sitting around waiting for the state to cancel your student loan debt or make everything affordable for you instead of, um, doing everything you can to be as financially healthy as possible or making your community as clean as possible, then you're going to um, you're going to be waiting forever because the state will not save you. That is the entire point of um, the state operating in the way that it does. They want you dependent on them and they want to keep you in a state where your head is just above water so they can take as much from you as possible. And that, that's how a lot of people are. Uh, most people in this country, the uh, United States, are living paycheck to paycheck, and that's true for uh, way too many people. And it's also true for people who operate at high incomes. You, how many people who are making uh, six figures live uh, paycheck to paycheck? It's because they are on this consumerist um, lifestyle, and that's the culture that's um, pushed onto society and the state in this country certainly has a role in that because uh, as I touched on before the state is a cultural actor and if you do not think that the state has every interest in um, pushing this consumerist uh, mindset in the culture you would be uh, a fool uh, as as I am I am Joker the fool and you are a fool too if you think the state doesn't want you to be a consumer that's that's why they back federally funded student loans that's why they have uh, bankruptcy court that's why they do uh, all the things that they do with uh, taxation. They want you to be uh, dependent on them so they can A, um, keep the system alive where they where they take from you and they, they barely give you anything back. That if, if uh, anything at all, um, especially if you're in this mindset of being as uh, self-sufficient as possible, you don't rely on, on the social safety net, you're not relying on uh, social security or, or any of these sorts of things, then you really do not get much, if anything, back from the state. But that, that as I said, that is, re that is really the point of it all. The state wants you to be dependent on them so they can take from as many people as possible and justify it by saying, well, you know, if we abolish the government, think about all the people on social security. Think about um, all the people who uh, use the trans publicly funded transportation and, you know, the, all the, the federally backed student loan debt and X, Y, and Z. And, you know, and it's all going to be um, solved um, eventually if you just vote for the right politician or you just pay more in taxes or, or it's always something that's going to happen later. And as I said, it's never going to come. It's all empty promises it's all bad for you, and it's all pushed by a um, group of old geezers who can't even get through an interview, um, whether 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 it's because they don't have um, a brain that's well um, that's maintaining um, <laughs> a state of non-dementia like Joe Biden, or the fact uh, you'd be like Mitch McConnell, where you're basically just uh, blacking out. Uh, in these press conferences because you're, you're so old and decrepit, decrepit that your physical body is um, affecting your ability to function mentally at all. Uh, it's because the, these politicians are mostly too old. They've been in there for uh, so long, and it's very rare that you get people who are of uh, an adequate um, age. And even you know the ones who are of an adequate age, uh, they are in it for the wrong reasons. They're in it to enrich themselves and their friends and to feel like they have power and control over people. That is really most people who get into government, in my mind, is that like, well, I want to um, fix everything kind of mindset. I want to fix things for people. And helping people is a great thing. It's just that the way you go about it or you think you're going about it with um, the state is by regulating and, and taxing certain people more and doing things that aren't 
um, lifting up the individual. It's more or less just trying to make the state do more for people and hoping um, that that solves the problems. And, but like, like I said before, the state's not really in the business of solving problems. There might be, and I'm sure there are some individuals within the state who want to solve things, who want to do things better. Um, as, as Doc says, 35% of uh, people in this country are employed uh, by the government. I'm sure a lot of those people are good, hardworking individuals who genuinely want to make their communities better, make their own lives better. And a lot of them, I'm sure, are doing that. It's just that they're working under a system that does not want the individual to thrive. They just want the individual to be dependent on the state or to perceive themselves as being dependent on the state because it's like, well, you know, I need the roads and the state are the only ones who can do the roads or the social safety net is something that can only be run by the state or, or X, Y, and Z. I could go on all day about the things that you perceive the state to need or that you appreciate um, having like libraries and all these sorts of things. And if you think, you know, you need local government, then you think you need the the state government and then you think you need the federal government. Uh, and that's how, how it builds up from, from the individual in terms of if, you know, a lot of libraries don't receive federal funding or these sorts of things, but thinking that the state is the only um, institution that can run a library, even if it's a local government or a state government, uh, then you're going to be in the mindset that the state uh, at all levels needs to exist in this country. And that just simply is not the case, in my opinion, of course. Uh, you are welcome to disagree with me, but this is, of course, my little corner of the internet. I can say whatever I want. So I, I am definitely one for abolishing the state, and that starts at an individual level. So you need to abolish any sort of relevancy or, or need for the state in your own mind, the sense of I don't need the state to save me. I don't need the government to make my life better. I can make my life better. And if more people enter into that mindset and work on self-improvement and work on just making their own lives better, that's going to make, well, yeah, makes themselves better. And then the people around them are better and then their communities are better. And then it snowballs into these um, glorious, um, uh, era of uh, goodness, I would say. It's a bit sappy, a bit vague, but that, that's the basic concept that I want to push out into the realm is that you don't need the state, you only need yourself and uh, the people you deem to be good enough to lift you up, uh, whether that's your family, your friends, uh, whoever in your life um, is a positive influence, it's a very important thing, is your, your environment, so be in an uh, environment that's as good as possible. Have as many good people on your side as you possibly can, even if that's just yourself. Uh, and you're going to do well for yourself. And you don't need the state to do that. You only need um, yourself and a mindset to uh, do that. And uh, I think that's enough ranting for me today. Uh, like, like, I, like I said, you want to um, abolish the state in your own mind. And the more people that do that, uh, the better things will be. So we will go to the outro of this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for being in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. Be sure to follow my Substack, velvetroompublishing.substack.com to read Machine to Man and all my other projects.